I only got two more rescues. I'll show you guys those in a minute. Really have no work on mowers planned for today. Uh, this one's still having issues. I'm going to try and put a primer bulb in it because it will accept one and maybe that will alleviate the starting issue because it's an auto choke system. Um, but as you guys can see, things have uh, made a little bit of a change around here. At least as far as organization goes, my dad got the shelf for some of his stuff and then he left these two empty for me. Which what I'm going to do is utilize some of these moat crates, throw some wheels into them, uh, sort in, you know, different parts, different things. Take all my parts that I have out of that cabinet behind the toolbox and just start organizing everything. Because this is, I mean, it's even starting to drive me crazy and this isn't even all that bad, you know, figuratively speaking. Um... So that's kind of what I'm going to be doing today. and I can update you guys as I go along because I know a lot of you appreciate this type of thing. Um, I am going to be doing some scrap metal. You know, victim of circumstance, I'm going to be having a lot of scrap metal. Uh, this motor I'm going to scrap. This motor I'm going to scrap. <clears throat> uh, I'm going to keep that blade. And there's, uh, you know, this orange deck. I mean, there's going to be, you know, probably a little bit more after that. I haven't decided if I'm going to save that mower yet or not. It might be worth it. It might be a $40 mower. Uh, but I'm going to start breaking things down. You know, I'm not going to... I'm really going to try and sh uh, shy away from this, just having carcasses of mowers around just because they take up space. Um, I know my dad probably doesn't appreciate it too much, but, you know, it's his property, so i got to do what, you know, got to keep him happy too. Uh, got this deck over here. This needs to be cleaned off and everything. It's still usable. But anywho, uh, stuff like, you know, scrap metal and everything. Uh, I'm going to start breaking down some of these. Uh, just because the motors are not performing, they're going to be, you know, like this one here. I've been having constant problems with this motor too. It's got some sort of electrical issue, so I'm just going to pop the motor off the deck and be done with it. I'm going to have a whole shelf full of... Uh, parts motors just for parts and I'll be labeling them what's wrong with them and everything just so I don't forget as far as the scrap metal goes all of that I'm just going to toss into the back of the ranger bed um, I've already kind of got some scrap metal going I don't know what my dad wrapped up the tailgate that's good so I kind of got a few things going today just stuff that needed to happen I'll show you these mowers before I clip out this one's got compression Looks like it'll be a runner. Really kind of edgy with these Tecumseys now just because I'm starting to have some issues with some of them. But it's, you know, the classic one. This is probably an early 90s model. Um, it does have compression, as I said. So that's cool. Now this one, on the other hand, doesn't have any compression at all. In fact, if I can hold this at the same time... There's no compression at all in this thing, so I'm sure the motor probably let go, but, you know, this is going to be one of those ones that, you know, I pop the motor off, save the deck, and uh, call it a day. So, anywho, the wheels on this thing, everything else is still good, but the motor's just shot. Brought those two mowers in to uh, start breaking them down. Just fix this tiller again. Well, hopefully it's fixed. <clears throat> uh... I think that old carb was just screwed up. It just kept pissing and pissing fuel out of it. So I threw this Chinese one on that my dad got off eBay. And uh, hopefully that'll fix it. Don't know for sure. If not, he's probably just going to go buy a, a Predator motor or something. He doesn't really know what he's going to do yet. This one is fairly old. It's, you know, it's the old style Greyhound, which is also a Harbor Freight motor. But I think Harbor Freight started selling those Predator motors like like this one around 2010 or 2011 so this one's you know definitely older than that uh if that were to happen he'd probably keep this one around for parts or something but like even the uh even the gas cap broke we'll have to figure that out now i did finally get this area all cleaned up over here got a couple other mowers that i'm going to break down over there i uh cleaned off that weed whacker again it got oil all over it and 
Got all this area all swept up. Got to pick all this shit up and throw it in the trash. But uh, things are coming along pretty good. Got a, a lawn boy. All the lawn boy parts are in there. Got the wheel and a blade right there and a couple motors. Soon to be a couple more motors actually. Uh, you know, I was just going to see if I could, you know, start this thing with it on here, but you know, with this deck the way it is, I just don't even really want to mess with it at the moment. And uh, I can't even use this motor on a uh, on the pressure washer, so I just don't even really want to deal with that right now. So I'm just going to break this whole thing down, uh, toss all the scrap into the back of the, the wrecked truck. Then I'm going to pull this motor off because it's uh, it doesn't have any compression either. So, yeah, it's just one thing after another, boys, but... So I uh, been picking away at things all day. The shop looks a lot better than it did. All that stuff's still sitting out here. Mower horns kind of dwindling down. Got four motors on here in this part of the shelf now. There's some of my parts. And then I ate lunch and I started thinking, you know, since I'm dicking around with all these lawn mowers, I might as well cobble this one back together. Here's some pictures of what it looked like before. And as you can see, it's uh, it was in pretty much a complete state of disarray when I got it. There was parts all over the place. In fact, I had to really get into uh, some of my Frankenstein hardware to uh, try and get this thing all put back together. I'm still missing a bolt, which is for the uh, air cleaner assembly, but that's okay. Anyways, what I'm doing right now is, as you can see, everything's been put back together to the best that I could get it. Now, for whatever reason, it did not have oil in it. I don't know why. And for whatever reason, that valve cover was taken off. I cleaned the carburetor out real good. It wasn't even really all that dirty, to be honest. I cleaned the gas tank out as well. Let's go ahead and see what our oil level is. I'd really like to get this mower going. It's really weird. It reads on this side, but it doesn't read anything on that side probably fine. I'm only going to run it for really a few seconds anyways by spraying some uh, starting fluid into it. So we'll see what happens. I just want to see if this thing will even start. Because um, as, as I said, they didn't tell me why they took it all apart. I mean, the only thing I could think of is, you know, maybe some sort of fuel or carburetor issue. Well, I'm not giving up on this thing entirely. As you guys can see, I've got a uh, wheel put on. And... Got another one here. This one's actually cracked. Like both of these Husqvarna ones are cracked. And I've got a very rudimentary kind of wheel system here. I really don't need to push the stupid thing, but I just want to see if this thing will work or not. So something that's a little bit more safe than just leaving it on a on a board. Uh, yeah. Also, the uh, self-propelled, much like that Toro that I picked up a while ago, is permanently engaged. There's a what appears to be some sort of uh, hose clamp, one of those metal ones at the bottom, that's preventing it from uh, moving. Now, given the uh, condition of the other lawnmowers I picked up out of that trailer park, it will not surprise me in the slightest if this one happens to have a bent crank. It would appear that we've got ourselves a little oil leak. Looks to be coming from the center part of the motor right there. Spray some starting fluid in. See what happens. Might make a little bit of noise because of the self-propelled if it uh, interferes with these wheels at all.
Yeah, that crankshaft's definitely bent. It also looks like it's spewing oil all over the place. That's too bad. These self-propelled lawn boys are, I think they cost almost like 300 bucks. Particular model number on this thing is a 10624. I think it's a 2011. I'm not sure about that, but that's just ridiculous, boys. Probably start right back up. And that's what a lawnmower with a really badly bent crankshaft looks like. In fact, I'm sure, I'm almost 100% positive that this oil leak has a lot to do with that. Because when a uh, crankshaft is bent, that puts a whole bunch of vibrations into the motor, into the deck. Uh, things like seals, especially when, you know, the crankshaft seal that goes up into the motor, like that little donut looking thing. Vibrating crankshaft will really jack one of those up over time, which is why this one's leaking oil so bad. But, yeah, this thing's definitely a write-off, unfortunately. Out of all the mowers I picked up out of that haul, uh, this is one which I uh, wish I could have gotten going. But I still can't figure out why they pulled the valve cover off, why they pulled the carb off. It's clear that they, that they ran over something and jacked something up. Such a shame. What's even weirder though is I checked the flywheel key and the flywheel key was perfect. In fact, it looked like it was the original one. It looked like it had never even been, it looked like the flywheel had never even been off. The flywheel key is actually supposed to stop stuff like that from happening, but I guess they're not foolproof. So I'm going to go ahead and drain the gas back out of this thing and put it back into the gas can or into another mower. I don't know that I will save the deck on this, uh, just because I don't know what all is wrong with the self-propelled system. It might be... In fact, from what I can see in there, you guys probably can't see that through that little hole, but it looks like the, uh, the cable itself is not even, it's, it's attached to a part of the uh, transmission, but it's not on there all the way. It's like it dislodged itself or something, but good thing I didn't buy new wheels for it. Good thing I went through and did the <laughs> extra step of diagnosing it. So... I guess that'll be about it for this video today, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Not really too much going on, as I said earlier, but... It's nice to have uh, some sort of organization going on, but... Anywho, you guys all stay classy.